In this video, we're going to be comparing all the test frameworks and finding out which one's the best. At the end, there's only going to be two winners, but you're going to have to stay tuned and see which one it is. I'm going to go ahead and rank all the frameworks from S to D tier. And at the end, we'll talk a little bit more about what each tier means. But let's go ahead and start with the first framework. Selenium is the first framework that we're going to take a look at. And anyone that's watched my videos would probably say, Andrew, what are you doing with Selenium? Aren't you going to put it in the D tier? But Selenium is really too big. You can do basically everything in it for free. It works with many languages, real devices. It's perfect for the cost. You have a hard time doing better with any other framework. That alone makes it go in the S tier for me. And you'll see why as we go through some of the rest of these frameworks. Next up is Cucumber. In theory, I really like Cucumber. The sales pitch is really good. That's until you get to the implementation. Then you find out that your interest just goes away. You have to sign up for specific accounts. Um, I don't like developers to have that experience where they can't run your tests without going to sign up for an account. It does support many languages, but I don't really like having to sign up for cloud services or accounts to run my tests. The B tier. Next up is Appium. Appium is Selenium for Windows and Android and iOS. I'm just going to let you know I'm putting it in the A tier. If you have a desktop application or Android, you know, any apps like that, even on iOS, it might be the best automation platform you can get. I don't have enough experience with it to put it in the S tier, but if it works with Selenium Grid, it has to be good. If anyone does have a lot of experience with Appium, share the comments down below. I'd love to read them. Next up is a tool called Waiter. This is a Ruby test automation tool. Not to poop on Ruby, but it's 2022, not 2008. With everything else on this list, not having flexibility for multiple languages, tooling, I just wouldn't recommend this. If all of your code's on Ruby, then knock yourself out. I do have a couple of friends who love Ruby, but otherwise I'm putting this one in the D tier. Catalan Studio. Catalan sounds great. The monetization scares me a little bit. Anytime they tell me it's no or low code, I kind of run away a little bit scared. The test creation's cool. But the fact that they tell you that your QA people shouldn't learn to code, th that's just a no-go for me. No, everybody should learn to code. Doctors, attorneys, plumbers, I don't care. You should all learn to code. Learning to code enough for basic HTML and CSS does not take that much programming. And it's only going to help your test automation if you understand that. I think this is a little bit of an expensive vendor lock-in, but it's not the worst on the list. I can't go any higher than B, but B is actually pretty good here. Next up is Playwright. This framework works across four languages, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, and Python. It even works with most modern browsers. Playwright's made by Microsoft after they stole the Puppeteer team from Google. You can check out my videos on Playwright, but it's fast, multi-language, and multiple browsers. The team will literally go out and fix the browsers for headless support, so Playwright is fast and accurate. The only feature that it's really missing is something like Selenium Grid, and even that is starting to get support. It might be your perfect framework for now. It goes behind Selenium, but it's still in the S tier. Once they get the missing grid functionality, and if they have any kind of support for iOS or Android, it'll by far be the best framework out there. Free, fast, and simple. At this point, we're ready for the speed round. All of these tools are similar, but they all do something I don't like. So we're gonna take a look at Rational Functional Test, Tricentis Tosca, Test Studio, Test It Anywhere, and Test Complete. These all go into the D tier, mostly because it's all software as a service. They all try doing this click recording thing. They might be amazing for you if you like to spend $1,300 per developer and you only want half your developers to be able to access it. I don't really want to have two different classes on your team of QA versus programmers. I think it's a toxic relationship. So I think it's just better that you can use a tool that everyone can use and not ones that have to be licensed with certain seat licenses. If you really think that you need these tools, you can probably grab anyone on the list. I would probably grab Tricentis Tosca seems to be the best one out of all these, mostly for their new AI tooling. They recently added something with Jira so you could kick off your test through Jira, even though I think it's a bad idea. You might think it's amazing, so you can go check it out. The next tool up is Silk Test. This is actually a plugin for Visual Studio or Eclipse to run your Selenium tests. It's not really a test framework. It's just a tool to kick off your tests, so I didn't rate this one. Next up is the Robot Framework. If I'm wrong on this one, please let me know. It seems to have multiple language support. 
but it just gives me those cucumber vibes. It looks like it's trying to be human readable for all the project managers out there, but I don't feel like that's the world's greatest feature. I feel like the trade-off is slower writing of tests because the complexity of writing the tests is actually higher. I'm willing to be wrong on this, but I'm putting this in the B tier. Again, feel free to comment below. Soap UI test is next. Not a UI automation tool like the other ones in the list. And this might just be sour grapes, but I've had some really bad experiences with Soap UI. It's completely possible this is due to the SOAP web services more than the SOAP UI tool, or it could be the team that I was working with that really made them very unpleasant tests to work with. SOAP UI test is obviously better than nothing for a testing tool, but if you're going to be working with SOAP UIs, you might not have many choices. So I'm putting this in the C tier, but if you've got to deal with SOAP, it's a good tool to go look at. SOAP UI did mention that they are great for REST APIs, but I'd rather use this next tool, Postman. This tool is developer friendly. There are features everywhere that are helpful. As a development tool, it gets an S, but as an automation tool, the best I can give it's a B. I love Postman, I use it daily, but when it comes to writing test suites with mocks and everything else, there's quicker, faster solutions. Yes, you can run these with the Newman console test runner, but it just seems easier to write your API tests in NUnit or JUnit or Python or anything else. You can just create your own framework easier using a REST API. Again, I love Postman, but it hurts and I have to give it a B. Next up is Fitness. Fitness was a tool designed by Ward Cunningham. If you don't know, he was involved with writing the Agile Manifesto, but that's just about as much as I would use this language. It's probably fine. I feel the community and support are pretty much non-existent to this day. So I'm just gonna put it in the D category, but you know, I guess for the designer, I'll just give it a C. Next up is Protractor. At one point, I really liked Protractor. It's basically Selenium. It's just a wrapper around WebDriver for Angular, which means it's for Angular only. At this point, you shouldn't be using it at all. It's been deprecated. Uh, you shouldn't go near it. If you had tests in there, they'll probably work, but you should probably port over to Selenium or Playwright. You'll just enjoy it more. So I'm putting Protractor in the C category. The next framework is Cypress. I like it, but one knock against it is it's only in JavaScript. When Cypress came out, it had a lot of innovative features, but the other frameworks caught up fast. If you're very new to automation testing, even if you don't use Cypress, I guarantee you should go read their whole documentation. It's basically a free book on automation test theory. I don't agree with them on every point, but at least you see an argument for the opinions they have. Their tool is great. It loses some points just for being JS only. I'd love to see a Python version, for example. I just feel personally that JS gets a little janky as your project grows when you start having a couple hundred tests. Otherwise, Cypress is fast and fun to use. I'll give it an A. So taking a look at the test automation tools as I have laid it out, I guarantee if you use the tools in the S class, you'll enjoy your time automating. The A class ones are also fine. Once you get into the B and C tier, you have more of a specific use case. I wouldn't just recommend those as a blanket statement, but like if you only use Ruby, there is really one framework there that's really meant for you. Otherwise, you know, you could try your luck with something like Robot. The D tier is only for those people who want to have a thousand people in their company, have very specialized tools. They don't want to teach them how to code. They want to point and click all over the applications and hope their testing doesn't fail. But spoiler alert, your testing is going to be in a pretty awful state. I know these companies make a lot of money selling these tools, but I have not had any good experiences with any of them in the past. I've used quite a few of them and seen teams using quite a few of them, and they've basically all been abandoned in my company for free tools. So if you like this list, check out my class on Playwright, and I'll see you in the next video.